Hi, I'm Paul Grimes. I'm Vice President with Lidos, and I lead our Energy Infrastructure Innovations Team. My name is Tristan Bannon, and I'm Lidos' Executive Director for Renewable Energy and Climate Technologies. So Executive Order of 14057, it was signed by the Biden administration back in December of 21. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in there to unpack, but really what it's about is about creating and stimulating a, a zero net carbon economy. It lays out a clear roadmap in terms of objectives, but what it doesn't do, it doesn't tell agencies exactly how they're going to meet those goals and objectives. That's for the agency to determine. The executive order sets some very aggressive goals, which are forcing federal agencies to really undergo some major changes to functions, of fleets, facilities, energy, which haven't changed too much in the last couple of decades. Federal agencies have a lot of new responsibilities now with the executive orders. In addition to their current operations of, of achieving their primary missions, now they're being asked to do so with different vehicles, different energy sources to be able to make that happen. That puts a lot of new responsibilities that they haven't had before just to be able to go and, and figure that out. Agencies now need to think about their fleets in a completely different way. They need to think about how are those going to be powered? What are the, the solution sets that are going to be best fit their mission and operation? What cars or what trucks are available? What time frame were they available? How are they going to plug them in? How are they going to build that infrastructure? What does that look like in terms of even if they build that infrastructure, is energy really available? Do they need to add renewables? Do they need to add batteries? Is, is there a new infrastructure that's going to be required to be able to deliver the power to make those happen? And then on top of that, there's all kinds of organizational change elements required. Power isn't instantaneous anymore. You can't just go pour a whole bunch of electrons in and like you can with gas and, and be able to have the vehicle be able to go. So you actually need to plan differently and think about your operational elements differently for the mission. The federal government owns an enormous fleet. They've got a, just a little bit less than 650,000 vehicles, and that puts them among the largest fleet owners in the world. And beyond that, and maybe just as significant, the U.S. government has an incredible diversity of missions, use cases, geographies they operate in, security requirements. You know, it really is an unprecedented undertaking. And, and oh, by the way, federal agencies and their, and their fleet managers, they're being asked to figure this all out in an extremely short period of time, often without budget augmentation, while still being responsible for their day jobs. And the technical skills and experience required they don't always reside in federal agencies. This is new technology. It's been the domain of the private sector, and even then it's relatively new for everybody. So if you take those dynamics together, I think you start to get an idea of the scale and the speed and the complexity of the problem. Zero emission vehicles are going to be part of the fleet moving forward. The executive order mandates that they be part of the fleet. So this EO is, is, is gonna have a lot of impact and a lot of net new responsibilities that agencies are going to have to go and partner with organizations and, and companies that have been through this process before to be able to help them create those solutions. Lighthouse has a deep understanding of, of what it takes to, to keep the lights on, to deliver power in every, every condition, whether it's from the utility grid, whether it's augmented by batteries, solar, microgrid, different technology solutions that we'll bring to bear. Lighthouse brings the tools, the technologies, and talents to make sure not only are we delivering effective mission-ready solutions that are, have the right power at the right time, but they're also secure and able to operate. We've been solving these types of problems in the utility and the commercial space for decades. We've got power system engineers who do nothing but think about this stuff day in and day out. Lettuce is actually the number four ranked transmission and distribution engineering business in the US. So we take that and we add to it a deep understanding of federal agencies' missions. We are embedded in the fabric of the federal government's most complex missions. Fleet electrification is a problem which involves planning, designing, integrating, stalling, sustaining, a mix of commercial and custom technologies. We help agencies match the right vehicles to their mission, which drives selection of the right charging infrastructure in the right locations for optimal delivery. That's what we did.